In this week's episode of Denside Depot, we are going to look at the top 10 ways the federal government tried to ruin classic vehicles with updated standards for emissions and safety and everything else. So stay tuned, sit back, and relax, and let's see what we got. In about 1973, the federal government really started to come down hard on all types of vehicles with emissions and fuel-related standards. And the first thing we're going to talk about today is what happened with camshafts and engines. Uh, essentially, timing would have been about four to five degrees retarded from the factory and then you would also have camshaft lobes where the duration was changed i'm not going to get into a ton of that but essentially what happened was these engines would either make a lot less power than they could have or they would have at least felt like they weren't as uh torquey as they should have been and that really really hurt the performance of these vehicles really starting about 1972 1973 and that lasted well into the 80s into the 90s i mean really it affected all vehicles for a really long time until fuel injection really came about so number one on our list today is camshafts and engines one of the reason camshafts were not very good starting in about 73 is has a lot to do with next up on our list and that is exhaust gas recirculation so what you would typically see on these cars and trucks is these giant cast manifolds exhaust and intake and then you would have exhaust gas recirculation ports put into them now the problem with this is obviously it reduced power it made the engines run a lot dirtier a lot worse it caused uh, maintenance issues it dirtied up the carburetors and everything else a lot of times these parts were typically taken off pretty quick from the factory especially on muscle cars and people that knew what they were really looking at and everything when you could uh, some states you couldn't get away with it many you could but they were terrible for these engines and they really put a damper on what could have been a lot better with these classic vehicles and that was exhaust gas recirculation and for the triple threat of federal emission standards you would also add in the dreaded catalytic converter now this car has had them deleted obviously uh, but the catalytic converters especially in the early 70s were absolutely horrific they were huge they were bulky they were extremely restrictive and they made the cars run like absolute crap now you could take them off pretty quick after getting the car if your state would allow you to get away with it but they put a huge damper on not only the performance of the car but definitely the sound of the car and not to mention they were really expensive to replace and obviously are today as well but they really put a damper on the classic cars as the technology back then was absolutely horrible and catalytic converters really did a bad number on them next up on our list today is actually clusters and specifically the speedometers now up until about 73 74 75 most vehicles usually had performance vehicles at least and a lot of others had usually around 100 mile per hour speedometer and this really stayed constant until the oil embargo occurred later on in the 70s when that happened the federal government instituted the 55 mile per hour national speed limit with that the auto manufacturers had to adjust and then knock down the speedometers on most vehicles to about 85 miles per hour. Now, that doesn't necessarily affect the performance of the vehicle, but when you talk about the aesthetics of the vehicle, the 100 mile per hour speedometer obviously looks way better than a stupid 85 mile per hour speedometer. Just another way the federal government constantly meddles in vehicles. We all remember these from back in the day. It was the wing window and they were absolutely awesome and they were extremely effective when going down the road on a hot day to provide you air conditioning, especially if your vehicle did not come with air conditioning from the factory. Now you may be thinking to yourself, well, how the heck did the federal government get away with regulating and essentially being responsible for eliminating the wing window? Well, with the increased fuel standards that started to occur in 73, auto manufacturers were scrambling to find any single possible way to increase fuel mileage over time they eventually realized that one of the things that they could do would be to eliminate the wing window and that would reduce the amount of air leakage that would occur when the vehicle is going down the road by doing so it would hypothetically increase the fuel mileage whether that made a difference or not i don't really know but the federal government is who you can thank for the wing window disappearing do you remember how great steering wheels used to look back in the day? You would often have a large steering wheel with either three spokes or two spokes or whatever it may be. There were tons of really great looking steering wheels back in the day. Of course, you will never ever see a steering wheel like this on any modern day car. Why? Because the federal government instituted airbag standards and now all wheels have to have a big ugly bag in the middle. Now this really didn't start to happen on full size pickup trucks until 
the late 80s, early 90s, or whatever time period it may be. But regardless, cool looking steering wheels are a thing of the past. They will never come back, all thanks to the federal government and the standards that we now have. Do you remember these little guys right here? You'd push them in and after a few seconds, they'd pop back out and boom, you would have your cigarette lighter. As kids, we'd all put our finger on it to test it to make sure it was still working right. And then of course, burn ourselves and have that really awesome burn on the tip of your finger for two weeks. Well, although these stayed around in all the way into about the 2000s or so, the federal government essentially made these illegal. And they did that by saying that they were a fire hazard. Now, I can't necessarily disagree with that because sometimes you'd have these cigarette lighters that got really excited and they would actually pop all the way out. And you can imagine if one popped all the way out and then went underneath your seat, they could catch your carpet on fire, whatever it may be. But these were definitely a great nostalgic piece of these classic cars and you won't find them today. Here's something you probably even never thought of. And while it's directly not attached to a car or anything like that, it definitely affects the performance of a classic car because I am always going to the gas station to fill up cars on my lot. And unfortunately, I still have to have my father's gas can from, I think, 1987 because the new ones are absolute junk and we have the federal government to thank us for this. They have these overly complicated tops that spin the vent or whatever it may be. You go to pour your gas into your car and what happens? The gas goes everywhere but actually inside the car. They don't work. They are total junk. I hate them. So to have a lot full of classic cars, you essentially need to also have a classic gas can, one that has... Uh, wow, a vent on one side and a basic cap on the other. It actually works. It's amazing. Federal government ruined gas cans. Here's one you probably never even thought of that is 100% the government's fault and it's kind of hard to see, but on many vehicles up inside the driver's firewall compartment, you have this. Yep, the little buzzer to let you know that the government's reminding you to put your seatbelt on because you are not responsible enough to put your own seatbelt on. Now, I will admit, in the old Ford trucks, I actually like the little buzzer. I think it's a cool, vintage, nostalgic sound. But in some of the cars that go ding, 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 oh my gosh, it's so annoying. That's why you just tick a, stick a screwdriver up there and boom, just pop it out so it's done. But yep, federal government had to remind you to put your seatbelt on. Thank you. Then in 2009, the federal government realized they did not do a good enough job of killing all classic cars. So they instituted a program called Cash for Cluckers. They would give you a $5,000 tax incentive to come in and trade in your old car and then they would promptly destroy it by pouring a sodium silicate formula in the engine. The sodium silicate formula would turn into a solid inside of the crankcase and it would destroy the engine, therefore ensuring that all classic cars would be off the road in no time. Fortunately, it did not work and most classic cars survived anyway. As a final bonus for you today, have you ever wondered why round headlights all of a sudden disappeared in about 1976, 1977 on most cars and trucks? Well, it actually wasn't the federal government's fault. The federal government required the round headlights and the auto manufacturers actually lobbied to get the square ones. Now they lobbied the federal government not because it was safer, they only did it because they thought it looked better. Now while I personally agree with the auto manufacturers, the square headlights do look better, a lot of people prefer the old round headlights. Regardless, that's one instance that instead of the federal government, the auto manufacturers made an instituted change. I hope you enjoyed today's episode of Denside Depot going over all the things the federal government has done over the years to try and destroy our class of cars. Now, one thing I will tell you is if we don't stand up for our rights to choose what kind of vehicles we drive, there will be a day when the federal government mandates that we can no longer drive any class of cars at all. Don't be fooled. The new EV green scam is absolutely that. It is a scam. It is not for the environment. It is strictly so politicians can get elected. We need to wake up and realize what is happening here in America so we can drive the cars that we want to drive regardless of what it is. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Denside Depot. Remember to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode.